Every house that I flip has its own story. How I bought the deal and what happened during the renovation of the property. I'm at 6113 Walter Brook Road in North Chesterfield, Virginia, and I'll be going over a couple of things in this video. The first thing is, how did I buy this deal? How did I come across this deal? The second thing is, what was my exit strategy for this property? And number three is, let's go over the expense and income for this property so I give you guys a transparent breakdown. And the last thing here is what did I learn during this flip? But before we get into that, let's take a tour of the property and give you guys the before and afters of everything. As you can see, we're starting from the outside of the property, the before photos on the bottom. It doesn't look too much different, but we added a brand new roof. We replaced that side of the fence on the left-hand side. We added brand new windows on the right side and then we also updated or filled in the mortar cracks on the right side of the property in the backyard we did a couple of things here from the before photos you can see there was two sliding glass doors that were there in the window we removed that because we didn't need three sliding glass doors we replaced it with windows we basically redid the whole siding over here on the back side of the wall updated a light fixture and then we refinished this whole deck we serviced the hvac unit and then we, we added a vapor barrier in the crawl space and then sprayed for fungus mold. And we added a sump pump in there. Over here on the garage side, we added a brand new roof as you guys, we can't see it, but we added that one. And then we kept the door the same. The sliding glass door replaced the glass because it had a broken seal. The inside of the property, the front living room is completely night and day. It was dingy carpet here before. We added brand new LVP flooring, took out the baseboard heat, added recessed light, and just had a nice coat of paint on the walls. As we head over to the bedroom, as you can see again, night and day difference when it comes down to each bedroom. This bedroom right here was just, man, it smelled so bad. It had a lot of cat urine and it was just a mess. Carpet was definitely removed. The LVP flooring was installed throughout, added a ceiling fan light, uh, and then just painted and updated the electrical fixtures, including the outlets and the switches. Next, we had a really nasty, dingy bathroom that we, as you can see, made a huge makeover. We added everything in here is brand spanking new, new toilet, and then a brand new shower here. And then we definitely added a light right here above the shower so you guys can see what you are washing. And then heading into the second bedroom, again, night and day difference. They had carpet and just a whole bunch of nastiness here. We ripped everything out, painted the walls, added a brand new window, and then updated the electrical fixtures. And then the master, once again, removed all the carpet, added brand new LVP flooring throughout. I love these flooring. It was uh, done by Flooring RVA. And we painted the walls, did the same thing as we did the other bedrooms. And then in the bathrooms down here, uh, once again, they had carpet in the bathroom, which is completely disgusting. So we ripped that out, add LVB flooring, new toilet, and then everything else in here is brand spanking new, vanity, faucet, mirror, and a vanity light. So that's it for the tour. Now, in the kitchen, it's a completely night and day difference. They had these really ugly, dark cabinets and it was really dingy in here. We demoed all the existing kitchen cabinets that were here. I had a brand new one, quartz countertop with stainless steel appliances. I really enjoyed how this setup really turned out. They had some cabinets over here overhang. We removed that. We added a nice little corner cabinets with a little countertop here. We had the refrigerator in this section, but it was like facing towards me. And then there was no like uh, wall here. It was like more of a slant. And there's a door, as you saw here earlier, uh, a door right there that would lead down to the bonus room. But what we ended up doing is basically walling this off, right? And then adding the washer and dryer there, added brand new plumbing and electrical fixtures. And then we had to really update the whole panel because the panel was completely jacked up. We added a light fixture here, this nice bifold door here so they can close and have that concealed. And then on the refrigeration side of things, we pivoted and had the refrigerator open up this way instead of open up this way because those will block the entrance of the door. And we added cabinets to match here. 
In the dining room area, we definitely cleaned it up, added a light fixture that's more appropriate in my opinion, and it just looks a whole lot better here. As you can see, we also added recessed light so the kitchen feels definitely more spacious. And then going towards the bonus room, this was a little bit more narrow. We opened up this wall, added the stairs right there, elongated them, made them wider. And then as you walk down, there are actually, as you see in the before photos, there were two sliding glass doors, which didn't make sense. So we took those out and added windows. We kept the existing bookshelf and then we removed all the carpet down to the concrete. So we end up staining this so it looks very nice. And then we replaced, like I said before, glasses in that sliding glass door. We kept everything else the same and added recessed light, took out the fan. And I think it turned out very well and updated the electrical fixtures throughout. I hope you guys enjoyed the before and after tour of Waterbrook Road. Before we jump into how I got this deal, if you're thinking about starting your real estate investing journey, consider investing money into yourself by investing in a community that will help you get deals where you can find money and partnerships to where you can shorten your learning curve and plug into a community of like-minded folks like in the sub two and Gator community. Now, the links are in the description below the first and second, so make sure you guys check that out. Circling back on how I got this deal. I bought this deal from a local wholesaler and it was a high competition property. I ended up paying the wholesaler right around $21,000. But when I actually did my inspection report, there's a couple of things came back that I didn't renegotiate because I actually liked the wholesaler and what I should have done is definitely renegotiated with the wholesaler to bring down the purchase price to probably five to $6,000 lower than my initial offer. So I ended up buying this property for about $207,000. The next thing I'm gonna be going over is what was my plan for the property? Now, I actually had three to four flips going on at the same time with this property. So I really wanted to convert this property into a rental property from the beginning and that's why I offered a little bit higher because that was my initial plan. But due to unforeseen things on my other flips, due to partner communication and partner mishaps, I really couldn't have kept this property as a rental. And my initial thing that I wanted to do was keep it as a rental so I could offset my taxes. But I still wanted to give a shot due to all the craziness that was happening in Norfolk. So this is what I ended up doing. As soon as this property was done renovation, I actually list this property on Facebook Marketplace as a rental. I think I listed it for like $2,300 or $2,400 a month. I was actually getting action on it, but the people that were inquiring about this property, they weren't qualified to rent it because I wouldn't want a troubled tenant and then have the headaches associated with that. So I ended up trying to convert this into a lease option. And before interviewing Tim Yu, which is right here, I didn't really do it justice by doing what I did. And what I should have done is reached out to mortgage brokers and lenders to see who they had that didn't qualify for a loan and see if they would be open to doing this property as a lease option. And so I didn't do that. I just went through Facebook Marketplace and try to basically market as rent to own. And that just sat on the market for a long time. I didn't get any qualified leads. And so at the same time, what I did was I put this property on the market for 325. And that's really, that's considered high in this general demographical area. And so I knew that would be a kind of a long shot, but I was, you know, hoping and praying that someone would buy this. However, that was not the case. It just sat for about a month. But during that time, I would lower the price like five to $7,000 each week to see if I can get action on it. And eventually I dropped it all the way down to 299 95. So $299,950 is what I dropped it down to after about 30, 35 days on the market. And then that's when I saw action on the property. And shortly after I got a couple of offers and I ended up taking one offer and that individual actually was the same buyer for Hunting Creek, but he wanted so much to be done on the property that it just was not viable for me to do that. And so I had to back out. And then after I backed out, I had another buyer come in 
to buy the property and I end up doing way less buyer request repairs than the original buyer. So this experience has been a very humbling experience and you'll see on the expense and income on actually how much I actually really made. So let's go there now. All right, in this segment, I'm gonna be running over my P&Ls real quick. So I end up borrowing $205,000 from my first hard money position lender and he was at 10% and two points on the front end, meaning I had to pay 2% points on the $205,000 at closing. And then shortly after I closed, I ended up taking a second lien position for $25,000 end up giving that return for $27,500, making that second lien position lender a $2,500 profit. So I'll post it on the screen right here so you guys can see the breakdown. And let's jump into the hard costs associated with this property, meaning the services, how much they cost, the labor, the materials, and the holding cost, okay? So the professional services, what I consider is like dumpsters, landscapers, professional photography. During this property, I end up spending two $2,175. As far as material is concerned, I end up spending $15,777.27. For the labor, I end up paying $43,591. Hella expensive. That also includes the cost for the buyer's repairs. And then my utility holding costs, which includes utility, includes lender interest payment costs uh, during the whole process, that ended up coming out to be right around $7,888.97. And my complete total cost all in on this property was $77,800.27. It's absolutely insane. I'll put it on the screen here. And my out-of-pocket expense is $52,827. All right, so now I am projected to make $2,024.73. Pretty dismal. At that point, it's just more of a break even. You learn your lessons and you got to move on. Hey guys, if you made it all the way to this part of the video, I want to say thank you so much. I hope I provided value to you guys. Consider subscribing and let's get into the last part of this video, the learning lessons. So I have three main learning lessons that I want to discuss here. The first one is some things are just outside of your control, like the market conditions and what the economy is doing. However, I actually was planning my exit very thoughtfully and the first two exits didn't really work. So I had to pivot and do the flip model, but I also had to take a loss at the end of the day and that's completely fine. I just had to make sure that I learned my lessons and moved on and take it as just one of those things that it happens, right? And number two is I didn't renegotiate the additional repairs. Yeah, it's five, $6,000, but that could have been five to $6,000 in my pocket as potential profit for what seemed to be basically a five month flip. Pretty horrible, but I should have just renegotiated. I should have opened my mouth instead of being a people pleaser. I, I just should have done that and just been more about business when I was buying this property. The third thing is that I actually need to get my cost lower for my flips. Like my contractors on this was very expensive. And so I'll just basically start renegotiating harder with my contractors and seeing if I can get lower in labor and then try to find better wholesalers for materials. And so those are my learning lessons in this video. And again, thank you guys so much for sticking towards the end of this video. I hope to see you guys on the next one. Peace.